All right, guys, something a little bit different this week. So this is episode one of a docu-series I am planning on Australian trapdoor spiders. This is a species highlight on that Sequicrypta jacara, Baricella day, brush-footed trapdoor. We're going to be looking at one species in particular. We're going to go pretty in-depth into the morphology, look at uh, what traits makes this spider that species. Have a little talk about behavior and a look at the different burrows these guys build. So hang around and hopefully you learn something. Species highlight, Sequicrypta jacara. The Brisbane brush-footed trapdoor spider or Sequicrypta jacara raven. A small to medium sized trapdoor spider that is adorably compact and robust in build. Body length in adults average roughly 24 mil in females and 22 mil in males. The carapace of these guys is rounded and the caput slightly raised. That's this triangular area here that houses the chelicera. The eyes of S. Chikara are set in three rows. Four eyes, two eyes, then two eyes. And sit pronounced from the carapace on the optical tubercle, this raised area here. Both abdomen and carapace are hissute. That's covered in hairs. As opposed to spinous, literally covered in spines like the Cataxia polenii. Spines of Estricara are sparse. They're concentrated on the legs and mainly towards the rear of the spider. Most dense on legs three and four. Markings include a beautifully mottled abdomen, present at all stages of growth, even the spiderlings. The only exception to this rule are the adult males who lose these markings upon maturing and gain that beautiful overall metallic colouring common to the males of the brushwood family. Spinnerets, those are the silk laying organs, are short and stubby. One single pair of spinnerets sits close to the abdomen, invisible from above. And their stubby legs are tipped with stubby feet, full of surprises. Pads of super dense microscopic hairs, called scopular pads, allow the spider to climb any surface, at any angle. <laughs> Making containing these guys uh, interesting. Here, little brush feet, cute little tufts. <laughs> no issues at all running straight up plastic or glass. It's this adaptation that gives the family Baricellidae the common name of brush feet. A pair of retractable claws are situated between these claw tufts. These help deal with uneven terrain and act as anchors to the silk of the burrow. Relaxed versus extended, basically grippers off versus grippers on. The combination of sticky pads for grip and claws to anchor yourself in place make this trapdoor spider a bug's worst nightmare.
common throughout Brisbane and Southeast Queensland. And the SEQ in Sequocrypta actually stands for Southeast Queensland, where this genus is found. This species prefers to make its home in forested locations. Areas rich in leaf litter and dense in bug life. Not that you would spot one though. <laughs> the littered burrows of S. Chakara are invisible to the naked eye. Carefully camouflaged to match terrain, perfect for the ambush. Architecture of the burrow is fairly simple. A short tube is created in the top 5 centimeters of substrate or leaf litter, with at least two littered exits. This is more of a captive burrow representation in something like cocoa beet. In the wild, that whole five centimeter top layer may be leaf litter, in which case Jakara may not burrow at all, but assemble a tube of leaves and debris instead, somewhere in the undergrowth. When hungry, the spider might sit with its legs outside the burrow, extending the range she can pick up vibrations. Or, to be safe, she can remain hidden within and wait for a knock at one of her doors. That gutsy female has four to five littered doors. Talk about an overachiever. She is very hygiene conscious as well, always dropping her trash outside for me, which is very handy. I'm sure other spider keepers can agree. A behavior that would help her avoid predators, mold growth, and ants in the wild. as does the antibacterial, antimicrobial webbing she produces to line her burrow. Another feature of these burrows is the lower collar under the lid. That's that lower rim there. <laughs> it allows the spider to pull the top lid inwards, creating a strong seal with the aim of stealthily shutting out the intruder. So that's all I'm going to be covering in this little video, just a quick introduction to Eschikara as a species. And to finish up, I'll leave you with a series of images showing Eschikara going through her glorious post-molt changes. The first 24 hours after shedding her skin, she goes through an incredible transition of colors. Check out that beautiful blue. Incredible, but the blue darkens quickly. She'll only hold this beautiful blue coloring for a few hours. The next day, she's back to black. It will very slowly lighten to that brown that you see in the old exoskeleton. Incredible stuff and a beautiful species. So thanks heaps for watching guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, hang around for next week's video where we'll be checking up on those cheeky Eschikara spiderlings. We're going to be separating them from mum's enclosure, rehousing them into enclosures of their own, which is uh, always interesting with a species that can climb glass. <laughs> Till next time guys, thank you.